Branson, Massachusetts, a tightly knit community just 25 miles outside of Boston. In 2005, restaurateur Tom Caceres bought one of the fixtures of the town, a beloved restaurant called the Old Hitching Post. My first restaurants, they were very successful. And then I wanted to own another one to pass it over to my oldest daughter. She wanted to become a restaurant owner like her father. Good afternoon, Old Hitching Post. Running and owning my own restaurant has always been my dream. So I was extremely excited when we came to the Old Hitching Post. Right this way, please. But even though my dad bought this place for me, my father does have the final say. What did you do? I've been working in the kitchen. What no, did you do? No, what did I told you? You gotta make sure water comes Janice in. is in the front. But I want you to be there too. Well, why don't you go? Because, no, you. My daughter, as good as she is, she doesn't know what it takes to run a big restaurant like this. Let's say I will leave tomorrow. My daughter, it will last three months. And that's the very truth. Tom will say Andrea doesn't know how to pay the bills. Andrea doesn't know what she needs for cash flow. Key point missing. Tom doesn't allow her to be a part of that. He thinks he's the only one that could run the restaurant and not anyone else. Andrea, if you're doing what I tell you, make sure your customer. Dad. Check. Relax. Right now. Relax. Tom runs his business like it's a small country he owns. The beef tips, people don't love them. Don't tell me that. My father makes people crazy. Do you do that all the time behind my back without me knowing? To him, the right decision is his decision. Don't never do that. Oh. Go back to your work, all of you. He tells us I'm the best at this. I'm, I know what I'm doing. Who are you? You're stupid. That was the most stupid thing I ever seen in these kids in the longest I've been here. Look, my way is the only way. Why? Because my way is the right way. Because of Tom, there are a lot of things that aren't done the right way. The way we handle food, the, what comes in through those doors, it's not always the best product. A lot of it's not good at all. Dan, they don't like it. It's kind of hard when we have all this unquality product. I don't really know why we don't do any business. Since the day I bought the old hitching post, I just keep her money out of my pocket just to stay open. My God. We barely make it. Now what are you gonna do? Pay the bills and get it over with it. I would have never signed up for this had I known that almost seven years into it, he would still be in charge. But we can't walk away because we've invested so much in it, so much time, so much money. But I don't know what we're gonna be left with. Tom is anxious to meet up with Chef Ramsay. Chef Ramsay, I'm right here. So he has volunteered to pick him up and give him an early morning briefing on the old hitching post. Whereabouts are you from? Corfu. Wow. The restaurant. It's Greek, right? No, no. Oh. It's an American. American, American food, but I have some Greek dishes. OK. Yeah. This is my third restaurant. Right. I've been very successful my other two. Well done. How long did you buy it? Six years. OK. I bought it for my daughter. As a, as a gift? Uh... Well, I bought it for her future, for, for her, her future. family. So she's running the restaurant now? But she's not running by herself. I'm right next to her. OK. I, I need to educate her a lot. She needs so much to learn about this business. I have a problem. She doesn't realize how much it takes to run a restaurant. Right. How many hours you got to put into the restaurant. She's not hungry for it. No, she's not. Wow. She's not. I give her a lot of authority. But she's not a hard-working person. Is she spoiled? She's not spoiled, but stop it. How's the restaurant doing now? Awful. Awful. I mean, awful, awful. I try to buy quality food. Good. That's very good. We try to give generous portion and reasonable prices, but wow. it doesn't seem to go nowhere. Jesus. And this is the honest truth. How much money are you losing a week? <sighs> are you ready? Please. Seven to $8,000. A week? A week. 30000 a month? Yes. Exactly. Jesus. Exactly. It's a disaster. This is your third restaurant. The previous two were successful. The third Very one, you bring your daughter in, and it's starting to go down. Correct. That's, That's the honest truth. This is it. Look at the size of it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Listen, thanks for the update. And be upfront and be honest with me so I can get to the problem straight away. What you see is what you get. Look at this place. Chef Ramsay. How are you, my darling? Very well indeed. And first name is? Janice, I'm the manager. You're the manager? I am indeed. 
Right. Um, Tom picked me up at the uh, train station. Oh, my. Don't believe everything you're told. Oh, really? Sure. Oh, damn. Because he, he was local. Always. Tom is a person who feels that he knows what's best. OK, um, let me sit down. Please, right this way. I don't think Tom has it within him to be open to change. Will he listen to Chef Ramsay? Unfortunately, I don't think so. Hello. How are you? Good. Me, Andrea, nice to meet Andrea, you. likewise. Gordon, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Let's catch up. Uh, obviously, um, I was grateful for Dad to come pick me up. Yeah. So he is um, instrumental in setting this up for you. Yes, I always wanted to do this. I love wow. people. Uh, your role, personally, what is that? Um, I come in here, I manage the front of the house, um, uh, functions that we do. I deal with the public. He said he runs the restaurant. Yes. But I mean, even after six years, you'd think that you've got up to speed in terms of trying to run this place. I can handle it and try to make it more successful, but my father's not ready to pass the buck over. Really? I can't do um, much of anything. On most parts, my hands are tied. It's just he's having a hard time backing down. Ooh, wow, because he let it slip that you weren't that passionate about running this. Oh, I think he's extremely wrong about that. Why would he I tell I have no me that? idea why he would say something like that. Because he sees, you know, I work really hard in here to make it more successful. I've got my husband to help me, and I think that we're... Husband? My husband works in here also. Okay, where does he work? He works all in the kitchen on the line. Um, Dad also mentioned that you're stubborn. What are you stubborn about? It's his way or no way. That's why he says I'm stubborn, because... I have different ideas and I have different views, but he has taken away a lot of my desire to do things and the the willingness and the drive that I had when we first came in here because um, I am held back. You know, I'm stuck. That's frustrating. Right, but there seems to be a, a butting of heads that we're not making headway. Is Tom nearby? Is he in Let the kitchen? Let me get him for you. Something that doesn't quite stack up. When we first came in here, this was my baby. But little by little, he's slowly draining some of the drive that I had for it. Um, sit down, please. Thank you. You said I wasn't passionate? I didn't, uh, I didn't mean like that at all. What I wanted to say is you're not ready to take over. Why aren't I ready to take over? First of all, you don't realize how much it takes a restaurant, the hours, and the money. Dad, you've got to be kidding. I don't know how many hours and stuff. I don't see everything. I've been by your side for all these years. The experience is not there yet, Andrea. So how many years did you think that I needed an experience <clears throat> for the restaurant that you bought me? What do you think is going to happen in this business that hasn't happened in the previous seven years? Who's the stubborn one in this relationship? Andrea. And she gets it from? Tom. From her father, Bud. First of all, none of you or your husband are ready to face a restaurant with a very lot of business we do. First of all, you don't even know. That's our fault that we do very little business. We need to fix things, Dad. OK, why well, don't you fix it then for seven years? You were here. Yeah, how can I fix what you're not allowing me to fix? What do you mean I don't allow you, Andrea? What do you allow I me to do? I have every right. For what in here? I, let I have you... to ask you to get ink. You don't even know when you write a check how much money is in a, in a safe there. Uh... Because you take all the money. I have but no what control I'm over is... anything else. But what I'm saying to you, Andrea, do you ever sit down and do your numbers? How can you expect me to know what needs to be done when you were doing all of that? No, no, no. This is a big issue right now. And you're really upsetting me a lot. Uh, no, you're upsetting I'm me. I'm working for Manamoni tonight for you. <sighs> if you were ready enough to say to me, Dad, sit home this week. I That's do. three months off. What? I want to work and I want to control the restaurant. Really? How about come you? On, We've Andrea. said that to you. Step down. You don't need to come in so much. I can do this. Dad, we've already had this conversation like two years ago. We never did. We, we never did. But what I'm saying to you, Andrea, you're not ready to take over. That's not true. Thank you. Chef Ramsay has just discovered that Tom and Andrea are clearly not on the same page about Andrea's capabilities. My father told me that I wasn't passionate. How can we be when he sucks the fucking life out of you? And while it's way too early to know who's right, the time has come to pass judgment on the food. Hi there. 
Hello. First name is? Carla. Carla, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? I'm from Hanson. Grew up okay, right please. here. Been here uh, 26 years. No. Wow. I've been with the first owners, and now nice. Andrea and Tom. Are those two always passing heads? They are, Jeff. They are. Yeah. So, but anyways. OK, let's start off. What would you recommend? Cranberry Haddock, Chef, because we are in Cranberry World down here. Uh, cranberry Haddock? Yes. I'll go for that. OK. You've got to try the meatloaf. Yes. And then lobster ravioli, made on site? Yes, Chef. It's made on site. It's fresh. Ravioli. Fresh ravioli. Oh, wow. Let's try one of them as well. OK. Thank Thanks. you, Chef. Tom makes us say that, yes, everything is fresh here. Let's prepare everything we need to do. It's not true. All right, Danny. Pero double check the salt. Chef Ramsey would love everything on my menu. It's excellent food. That's good. You got the lobster ravioli coming? It's yes, coming, we do. Yeah. Minute away. Good. I know we're in the uh, area of cranberry, but my God, from napkins to the walls, it's cranberry OD. Wow, that was quick. This is our lobster ravioli. This is the homemade ravioli. Uh... Listen, OK, I apologize for that. The lobster is not fresh. The lobster's not fresh. You told me it was. It's frozen. It's frozen. It's frozen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're not even uh, hot in the middle. Mm. Oh, there. Oh. I can't do that to my tummy. It's dreadful. Obviously, store bought. Yes, Jeff. They're nasty. That didn't even get swallowed. Sorry about that. Thank you, Carla. Why would you come to a restaurant to order store bought product? I don't, I don't get it. Oh, Chef Dan? Yes. He spit it out. Listen, the longest I own the place, I never heard of one complaint. Never once. Next, cranberry haddock. Cranberry. Lemon on this one, honey. That looks good, Carla. Right, what is this? We have the cranberry haddock. Oh, cranberry haddock. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Carla, come on. It looks like some bear shot in the woods. Really? And what's the water coming up? I mean, look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. I can't believe I'm eating this. <laughs> Watery and bland. It is absolutely disgusting. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry. Raw. God, they're dreadful. Look at that. Bland, undercooked. And as for that mess, mm. soggy, wet, and just depressing. Oh, disaster. What a mess. OK, uh, we'll yeah. check on your next scores for you. Thank you, Carla. God, that was gnarly. He doesn't like the cranberry haddock. What is wrong with our cranberry haddock? The cranberry was not good. He doesn't like it, no. I eat it once a week. People love it. People taking them home. They eat today, and they take it two, three orders home. The chef runs, he didn't like it. This is the meatloaf. Oh, meatloaf. Thank you. When, when was this one made? This was made today, meatloaf? Today. Yes. OK. Enjoy. Disgusting. One ounce of seasoning. Dry, horrible texture. It doesn't feel like a meatloaf was made today, let me tell you. Was the meatloaf made today? No, meatloaf was made God only knows how long and then frozen. Don't even tell me that. Are you sure that was made today, Danny? It was not, Chef. It's frozen. It's yes. frozen. Frozen. Carla, why are you doing this to me? Sorry about that. It's bland. It's bland. just okay. yuck. Yuck. Okay. It doesn't really freeze that well, meatloaf. Who makes that? Chef Dan. And the Chef Dan had his tongue removed. Well. Thanks, Danny. Okay. And here we go. What's wrong with this? This is actually Chef Danny said it was dry and overcooked. We do freeze it. And you think you lost your taste buds? Give me a break. 
Joseph Ramsey destroy every this I offer him. He insulted me. I don't care who you are. Ramsey or no Ramsey. Darling, where's the kitchen? When you insult me, better be ready to explain yourself. Hi, guys. Come around. And this is? I'm Dan. Dan. Gordon, good to see you. Nice to meet you. I'm Kevin. Kevin. I'm Spiros. Spiros? Nice so, oh, the Andrew's husband? Yep. Excellent. Come over, guys, please. I'm absolutely disgusted. The food is outdated and bland. The lobster ravioli, disgusting. I don't understand the mentality of serving frozen shit that you buy in. Damn. Help me understand the madness. I can't even answer you on that right. one right now. It's a setup for disaster. Had it with cranberries. That cranberry glaze, watery spinach, disgusting. Raw sweet potatoes, the grilled meatloaf. When was that cooked? Every two weeks, we end up making a batch or so. It gets portioned and then frozen. How sad. I mean, how sad. Yep. When you freeze cooked meat, what happens to it as it defrosts? It dries out. Then you grill it. What happens to that again? Dries it out even dries a again. little bit more. It's gross. It's almost impossible to make a, a loaf of meatloaf every day or every other day. You cannot do it. So we make it in batches of two weeks. We freeze it. We dry it out. We thaw it. And then we grill it. It makes sense. Come on. I thought you were going to love my midlock, regardless if it was frozen. You thought I'd like that? Well, I really did. I mean, I'm, you want me to but be honest? But how's it possible, Tom? It's something different. Grill it. It's an insult to America. In this area, that's what they love. Really? Yep. You're not going to convince me on that one? Now, this is very, very good dish and a very famous dish. They're coming people from far away. Dan, have you actually ever sat down and tasted that dish from start to finish? Yes. Yeah. Do you like it? No. So now I've got a chef that doesn't like what he serves. Do you have any idea how stupid that sounds? Yes. But you seem happy with it. No, I'm not happy with it. Then stop it, Dan. I try. I try. You know, I do. <laughs> wow. How do you rate the food? I don't think it's all that much to talk about. I think we're outdated. I think it's just OK at best. But out of 10? Three or four. And you're saying, Ramsey, you need to respect my food. I did. Get out of your bubble, Tom. Get in the real world. I wish I could say thank you. How come? How come you don't ever tell your brother that the food you cook in here and you serve with him is shit? We talk all the time that the food's not that good. Did you tell him to change? You don't let him change things. I never allowed him. I never off. allowed him not he to change anything. To when did I tell off? you not to change? I've tried to take things come off. Come on, Dan. Why don't you change the menu? It's not his fault, not my fault. The way you spoke earlier, you say four to five. That's what I've given to this food. Our food is good. How can you see a friend of the Chef Ramsey is not good? We got another issue there. Piece of shit. When I think I'm right, oh, I'm going to keep fighting. You know what I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep fighting and fighting when I get done. With Tom being adamant that there is nothing wrong with the food. I'm sure you've done this, folks. Chef Ramsey gets his first opportunity to see how the locals feel about the menu at the old hitching post. All right, boys. Pasta pignoli meatloaf. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, chef. Put that in the oven to reheat, please. This is the one we want to use. That's the oldest. Wow. What is that? Tom. What is that? Frozen calamari. Did you buy them in like that? That's how it comes. Is that how you grew up, watching calamari in Greece? I try fresh with the skin on, like a European. And nobody even ordered them. Nobody ordered fresh? Oh, fucking here we go. One more meatloaf coming up. Is that the meatloaf? Yeah. The frozen. Tom, you got upset with me earlier. You got upset with me. I want you to love my meatloaf. Yeah. You hear the little maracas? Like yep. they have in Greece? Yep. I mean, honestly, do you want me 
to kiss your ass no. and tell you that I love your meatloaf. So, I dare you, go out in your dining room and tell your customers that you're serving that. No, I'm not going to do that. You got no balls, have you? I got a lot of balls. Mine is bigger and stronger. Yours is bigger and stronger. I got a more fucking balls, more than him, and a, a lot of a half a dozen like him. You're not proud of what you serve. Because if you're proud of what you serve, you'd have no problem taking it to the dining room. I'm proud of my product, regardless if it's been on the freezer. Take it out there, then. I don't want to do that because it's too humiliating to me to go with a yeah. thousand of rock, two so pieces of meatloaf. It's not that humiliating for you to take the money, then. Oh, put it in your pockets. That's not humiliating, is it? Why don't you just admit that it's wrong? It's not wrong. Wrong is you're if I go over here and like fucking blockhead, them. and you think you're going to be successful serving that shit. Wrong, Thomas. You shouldn't be anywhere near this kitchen. What a disaster. Yes. I'm cooking it and I'm prison. There's nothing wrong with that. What I'm struggling, Andrea, I'm struggling with who's oh, pushing the standards oh. here. Who cares? Look at that. Does that represent you? No. The second generation running your father's restaurant? No. And if someday he lets you take over, you have to do something about this. No, I realize it. It doesn't stop you having standards. When you see it like in a big picture like this, when it's one thing after another that's getting pointed out, it's, you know, it's, it's one big mess. Carla, as you take their orders, yeah. I think it'd be nice for you to explain whether it's fresh, whether it's frozen, defrosted. OK. I want you to know what you're ordering. All right, um, the dill salmon. Salmon oh. is frozen, yes. The shrimp scampi? Frozen. Frozen, yes. How about the crab cakes? Frozen. <laughs> All right, my order is going to be Caesar salad, mm -hmm. which is fresh, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. My apologies. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. As some diners rethink their orders, Others regret theirs. Chicken doesn't taste fresh. How was that uh, meatloaf? It tastes like a TV dinner that I give my three-year-old. <laughs> yeah, that's being polite. It wasn't very good. No. Um, I don't think they were fresh. You don't think they were fresh? No. With Chef Ramsay hearing enough of the customer complaints, he decides he needs to further investigate the practices of the kitchen. Dan. I did, I did. Yes, sir. Do you buy them like that, in milk? No, we don't buy them like that. Why do they like this? It's the Wall Street. Because, unfortunately, those are the frozen ones. I know. Sorry. Tom, I mean, honestly, why are you doing this to yourself? Those were what they were. Why are you doing this? Just smell inside there. Come on. Just smell inside there. It smells beautiful, ocean fresh. It smells beautiful, ocean fresh. Kevin, can you get me Andrea, please? Andrea. Help back, please. Uh, you can't hear me right now. So, Andrea, come around, please. You got two seconds? The scallops were serving. They're frozen ones. He's in denial. I have to talk. Relax, no, no, Dad. no. I need to talk. Just talk. There's nothing wrong. I eat myself. If you pick up this bag, I pick them up myself this morning. If you take this bag, they've been in the freezer for one day or 24 hours. And pick up this one, you're going to find the same seafood product. Disagree. Go ahead and smell this one and smell that one. Tell me what the, what, what's the difference. You are trying to convince me that serving frozen food is better than fresh. It is not a frozen. They were in the fucking freezer. You buy them in the bulk fresh, you put them in the bags, you weigh them out, yes. and you freeze them. Yes, I do. And in the morning, you take out 10 bags, you let them defrost, they sit in their piss like that, and then you cook them. Yes, I do that. Right. But Sorry. you will criticize me the milk and the smell. There's no smell any different. That's so, one from this one. And I say they smell like ocean fresh, and they do. So they smell the same once they've been frozen. Depends. If you got to go oh. one year on a freezer, one oh. day. All right. Oh. You have not clue what you're talking about. Oh. They smell fresher once they're defrosted. Shit. You're fucking loopy. They smell fresher after being frozen. Oh, come on. Anybody's in a restaurant business. What? No matter who he is. Rule number one when studying to be a chef, fresh food doesn't smell, taste fucking better 
Once it's frozen. Shellfish is something you never freeze. And now here you are lecturing me that that fucking thing is fish. No. While Chef Ramsay continues to explain to Tom how his pre-cooking is having a negative impact on the food. Fresh food doesn't smell, taste fucking better once it's frozen. Tom remains in denial. No. It doesn't matter if it's frozen or not. It doesn't matter if it's frozen or not. No. He's trying to convince me that this idiotic setup is acceptable. Do you honestly think that your customers will be happy to pay for frozen shit being defrosted rapidly? They are under the impression in your fucking dying room that what you're cooking them is fresh. So you're not going to convince me that this is better than serving it fresh. What I've just said, does that make any sense? It does. It does. Thank God you're not as stubborn as your dad. If you don't like my food, don't even talk to me. I don't want you. Oh, my God. I'm extremely embarrassed. My heart is like breaking because um, this is something that I'm really proud of. And tonight just showed that I really shouldn't be proud of this. Thank you. Uh, really disgusting. My dad, his mindset is not allowing us to go up from here. I need a drink. Andrea, this can't continue. Your father's in denial. He's trying to win an argument that doesn't make sense. Welcome to my life. He's got to stop trying to convince me of these ridiculous practices, and every time. He doesn't see that they're wrong. I want this business, but I want it, I want it to function correctly. And my fear is that by the time it comes to me, what am I going to do with it? There's nothing to have. It's gone. That's my fear. I need your help to convince him that we are stopping a dead. Frozen shit. I can't do it without you. Okay. I'll see you in the morning. Thank nice. you. Good night. With Tom claiming the community is in love with the food. Hello. Nice. Mm -hmm. Great Good to, to see, you. see you. Have a seat. Chef Ramsay gets up early. You willing to take some callers while we're here? Absolutely. To get more feedback from the locals. I've attempted to have a butternut squash for aviolas and felt digestive issues. Oh. The fish and my vegetables were total mush. It's dated, it's lackluster, it's in need of help. Now armed with more evidence of what he suspected, Chef Ramsay heads back to the old hitching post for a showdown with Tom and his staff. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, Hello. Hello Chef Ramsay. First of all, the one thing that I learned since I've been here is that there are a lot of bad practices taking place. Yesterday was very upsetting. Right. This morning, I went live to a local radio station. All of a sudden, the phone lines started going crazy. Lines are jammed. These complaints started coming in. Let me tell you something really important. The reason why we're in this situation, Tom, is because this whole business is run on your system. Why are you so controlling, Tom? It wasn't controlling type of thing, it was just a routine. Not as far as I'm concerned. Tom runs a business his way, and he's not open to alternative ideas. So Tom makes a decision, everyone's got to go with it. And of a percentage of decisions, how many of them are right? I think it's 50-50 on some wow. of the items. Wow. Tom, let me tell you, you do not want to pass a liability to your daughter. Exactly. So you have a duty now to step up and do something you haven't done in seven years, and that's change. Sometimes you're stuck mentally, physically, economically, and there's no way out, and you just hope for a better day. But I'm always a believer of better day, better business, to do changes at any time. OK. I'm hoping that my father is ready to listen, because we need a big change. We have to change immediately. And I trust you. Mm -hmm. I need your help. Let's get together. Yeah. I can't do it without you. You got my support 100%. I'm going to be right next to you. Coming up, with everything on the line. Come on, guys. Don't start slipping now. Tom takes a back seat and lets Andrea take control. The salmon, raw in the middle. But does the kitchen rise to the occasion? Oh, come on. All of you, stop.
while Tom appears ready to finally give in and change. Wow, I mean, it looks better than last night, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Chef Ramsay, with the help of a couple of locals, look at that beauty, has another major point he wants to make. Take care. Now for something fresh. Just wanted to show you something. Two meatloafs. The one on the left hand side is a turkey meatloaf. Next to that, you've got a classic meatloaf. Both made fresh. Visually, what does that look like? Really, really nice. Gorgeous looking, both of yeah. them. Right. Take a fork, please. Things need to look good, granted, but proof is in the tasting. Chef, I swear, in my life, I never taste any better. Yeah. Right. I have a confession to make. Uh-oh. This was actually made by two of your customers. Wow. What you've got to understand is, to keep your business alive, you have to deliver something better than they can cook themselves at home. That is it. I do realize right now, we need to change immediately for much better. You know what? I was blind all this time. And I'm ready for the changes because I trust his judgment and his experience. You've got to want to do it. Absolutely. With Tom now fully understanding the errors of the past, Chef Ramsay and his team jump into high gear to give the old hitching post an exciting new identity. Right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Tom, when you bought this restaurant, you didn't make any changes. Very little. Take off your blindfolds. <gasps> wow. Oh, oh, my God. God. oh, my God. Are we in the Oz? Beautiful. Oh, my God. <laughs> Stay with me. Stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> Happy? Yeah. So, gone are the cranberry walls that match the cranberry napkins. We now have a stunning modern bluish grey, contemporary. Gone are those disgusting banqueting chairs. We now have some rustic, charming, authentic wooden chairs. This is amazing. Gorgeous. Have a quick look at the reception area. Oh. oh. The whole entire area has been cleaned up. Beautiful. We did an art installation of reclaimed oh, shutters. Yeah. Oh, How cool is yeah. this? It welcomes you to the restaurant. That's incredible. Ready to see the next part? Yes! Ready? Let's go down. All the way in. Oh, my god. All the booths no. are gone. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, my god. <laughs> Those booths give you that claustrophobic feel. We've lightened up the dining room. We've got a proper space in here now. This is gorgeous. On the wall, we have these stunning plates. Now, I know you're Greek, and you have your traditions, but these plates are not for breaking. <laughs> <laughs> this is just amazing. Totally, I feel like I'm in a new building. I'm at the new hitching post. You happy? More than happy. <laughs> the changes, the, the chandeliers, the colors, the photos, beautiful, all around. Everything in one night. <laughs> This is the most incredible thing I ever see. I feel on the top of the world. Only in America. To go along with the dramatic makeover... Come through, please. Wow. ...is a total revamp of the food and the practices on how to prepare it. We'll be cooking fresh. Running out of things is normal. Get used to it, OK? I fully agree okay. with you. Let's start off at the top. Mm. A delicious homemade clam chowder. Yeah. Oranges. Oh, wow. Next to that, a New England lobster roll. Yeah. A pan seared salmon. Oh, wow. Done with a herb butter, asparagus, and roasted potatoes. Meatloaf. Look at that. Bacon wrapped. Yummy. Creamy mashed potatoes, green beans, with a really nice glazed ketchup sauce. I love it. Look how good the food looks. Just beautiful. beautiful. Mm. Exactly. It's amazing. Jump in. All right, I'm digging in. Mm. Incredible. I feel like I'm tasting at, at a new place, like somewhere else. Excellent meatloaf. Mm. <laughs> when you order any of our dishes from the new menu, you will be satisfaction guaranteed. I thought I, my chart was very good, but this is excellent. I have never tasted anything better, and that's the honest truth. Okay. You like it, Dan? I love it. Mm -hmm. oh, so nice. Mm -hmm. 
Coming up, it's relaunch night at the old hitching post. Come on, guys, don't start slipping now. And for Tom and Andrea... The salmon, raw in the middle. It's make or break. Stop, stop, stop. But will the new menu be executed properly? Stop! It's relaunch night, and everything feels different about this restaurant. The only thing you're gonna find in the freezer? Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> New decor, new menu, and a new boss in control. There's so much to do here. Okay. Controlling the standards, being assertive with the team. Okay. Pressure. I need to step up and be a leader and have a smooth show tonight. This is huge that we get it right. It's do or die. Let's have a great service. Good evening. How are you? Please come right in. Yeah. This is a salad. Yeah. And fish and chips. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you. If anything we can do for you, please let us know. Okay? Thank you. Get ready, boys. Firing apps, table 23. Two clam chowders, Caesar, and a wedge salad. Two chowders, Caesar, and a wedge, ma'am. Coming up. Perfect. Coming your way. Thank you. Ladies, pick up. Apps going down for 23. What's next, please, Andre? Keep it going, yeah? I need two salmon for 25. Right here. Ladies, pick up. Thank you. Okay, come here, now please. I need a stroganoff, a scampi, a meatloaf, and a medium rare rib. Oh, come on. So look, that's raw. Oh, yeah. oh my put your finger, no, put yeah, your finger no, in there. You are the last line of defense, and they're just throwing food out. Stop! Stop, stop, stop. All of you. Yes. Listen. The salmon, raw in the middle. I need one piece of fish on the fly. Now look at me. We haven't worked this hard to start throwing food out. This lady, she's the last line of defense. Do not serve her raw salmon. Come on, bring it together, yeah. please. One mistake like that just throws everybody. I was worried because I want to make sure that Puri was right. Andrea, do something. Reorganize yourself. How long am I waiting for that salmon? Complete the table. Come on. There you go, Andrea. Ladies, pick up. Take those now. Thank you. Looks lovely. Good. I'm looking for 30 and 26 right now. Seconds away. Thank Good. you. Andrea, you're doing beautiful, honey. I need a pick up. Pick it up, baby. Thank you. You know you can do it. 26. Oh, that looks beautiful, honey. Doesn't it? Delicious. Oh. Really fresh. Beyond good. But it is definitely a lot better. <laughs> All right, guys, last three slips on the board. Finish strong, guys, Dan. Yeah, keep it going, yes? Yes, sir. Keep it going, Andrea. Well done. Up. Got it? Carla, pick up 29. Andrea, so much you can do, honey. I couldn't have beaten any happier. Now, I'm going to cook everything fresh. Every day, Chef Ramsey proves to me it's the only way to go. Nice job, everyone. Nice, nice teamwork. That was that was awesome. Awesome. That was good, right, Dad? Very good. I don't think my dad was 100% sure that I could do it, but pretty sure I proved to him that I could do it. Um, I'm really happy. Andrea, can I see you for a couple of minutes? Sit down. Andrea, today's a big day for me. I want to present something very exciting, something very good. I'm passing over to you something you want. I'm leaving. Okay. I want you to take care of it. I want you to be successful. And you know I'm going to always be next to you for whatever you need. I know. So, go out there, girl. And get them. Okay. All right? I love you, Dad. I love you, too, honey. Thank you. Give me a minute. Go ahead. It was very difficult for me, but that's my wishes. That's exactly what I want to do. She's a leader. She's a worker. She's going to be very successful. You just made her very, very happy. It's been a long time coming, and I understand the nervousness. But honestly, she can do it. I know she can do it. Okay. She can do it. She had two best teachers. She can do this. Thank you. Okay. Let me tell you something. What an amazing relaunch. Come on. How did it feel? <laughs> oh, great. You guys did a fantastic job. Everybody. Thank you, Chef. I feel better than ever. Andrea deserves it, and it's all hers. Mm -hmm. From the bottom of my heart. Just reaching this point, 
today and, you know, getting the okay from my dad to step up and be in charge, it's amazing. Thanks, Dad. Yep. Thank you. Well done. Two roll. Thanks Brilliant. to you. Thank Keep you. on your work. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> I am the most grateful person to thank Chef for what he done for me. Chef Ramsey proves to me I can hand over the restaurant to my daughter. And right now, I could not be any happier. I never thought I was going to be able to get through to Tom. Wow, what a stubborn man. But once he realized I was doing all this for his daughter, he was a changed man. In fact, he was a pleasure to work with. And I strongly believe in Andrea. And now, finally, after seven years, so does her father. Wow. Frozen meatloaf, cranberry and haddock. It's all Greek to me. After Chef Ramsay left, Tom kept his promise to give Andrea full control of the restaurant. Gentlemen, firing an app for table four. Caesar and chili. The old hitching post is on its way to becoming not just a successful restaurant. Excellent. Perfect, really perfect. Good. Thank, Thank you for joining us. But it also fulfilled the dream that a father had for his daughter. We're so happy for you. We are. Beaver, Pennsylvania an upper-middle-class suburban community located 28 miles outside of Pittsburgh and home to Levante's Italian restaurant, opened in 1998 by Dino Fratangeli. Hello. After graduating college, Dino wanted to open a restaurant. How is it, yeah? It's good. And with his father, Tony, investing his life savings, Dino's dream came true. Did you start to get orders? When we opened, there wasn't much down here, and the town had a need for uh, a restaurant. Cajun chicken and broccoli. And I was a little overwhelmed with how much business we had. The fun hasn't begun yet. So I asked my sister to come in and help me out. OK, there's eight of you. Seven. 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 At the time, I had a flower shop. I was a florist. But I felt like I needed to help Dino. So I sold my flower shop and came to work here at Levante's. Enjoy. We'll be right with you. Everything was going fine. And then, unfortunately, we got competition. That changed everything. How many tables do you each have? Two. That's it? Mm-hmm. People just aren't coming to Levante's anymore. The real reason the restaurant is failing is because of Tina and Dino. Janae, what's our special tonight? Pasta spinachi. <laughs> That's our special all the time. Dino has absolutely no clue what he's doing in the kitchen. I'm going to put it on top. Are you kidding? I'm going to let you do this. The quality of the food is gross. It's definitely chewy. They're like rubber. When are we opening, guys? Tina, I would replace her with a manager who knew what she was doing. Are you kidding me? She's a disaster. I can't um, figure it out. One of the most frustrating things is just the fact that Tina and Dino cannot function together. It's just so simple. Simple. A big sister doesn't like to listen to her little brother very often. Our communication's a one-way street. You've done nothing that I've asked you to do as a general manager. No, that's not true. He points the finger at me for everything. It's always my fault. Dino! Dino! All right, all right. Dino and my relationship got worse. And Dino walked away for about a year and a half and left the whole business on my shoulders. This is too hard in the middle. And then tried to come back. It just kept declining. Our situation's pretty desperate. Right now, we owe $1,200. Do they have a 10-day grace period? No. They're not even being patient anymore. I put so much money this, inside this restaurant. If this restaurant closes, I'll be at a quarter of a million dollars. Just don't know what happened. I feel really bad for Tony because I don't think that he really even knows like how bad it is. Tina and Dino are basically throwing his money away. This place is a disaster. Honestly, if Chef Ramsay was not coming, I would have given it six months to live and or just board it up. As Chef Ramsay makes the short drive in from the Pittsburgh airport, 
he takes one more look at the video message that convinced him to come to Levante's. I'm calling out for help. My brother and I have owned for 14 years. We have a lot of bitter arguments over this, and hopefully you can come help us to get our restaurant back. I really need your help. Wow. Hello. Hello, how are you? I know you, I recognize you, how are you? Nice to meet you. Likewise, uh, good to see you. It's a pleasure. Um, thank you for that message. Um, I didn't realize things were that bad, but yes. personally, how are you doing? I'm okay. Okay, you sure? I'm ready for your help. Okay, um, where's brother, where is he? Probably in the back. Okay, let's sit down and have a, okay. a chat, shall we? Please. Please. Making that a phone call for Chef Ramsay was just my last hope. <laughs> I just really need the help. Hey, how are you? Dino. Dino, good to see you. Take a seat. Mm -hmm. uh, right, good to see you both. Good, good to, see, to see, you. see you. Give me a little insights behind the scenes. When did you open? Uh, we opened in 1998. Right. I had uh, just graduated college and I was kind of trying to find my, my way in life. And mm -hmm. me and my father uh, kind of got together and he was my financial backer. So dad bought the ration for you? Yes. yes. Wow. So you started business together? Actually, he wanted to start the business and asked me to come along with him. Oh, At the so time, I had a flower shop. So why would you leave the flower shop? I felt a I needed to help, you know? I felt it was the right thing. Mm -hmm. So you've given up a lot to keep this business afloat? Yes. And where does your father sit in this? Throughout the years, he's put his money into it. How much longer can your father support it financially? I don't think anymore. Not more. much longer at all. Not much longer. No. What's the problem with the restaurant? He is. That's there insane. Was, no, that is insane. That's that's the truth. Who's in charge? Him. He says he is. Right. But I'm here more often than he oh, really? is. Uh, I wouldn't say that she's here more than me. Chef, I've been here double probably of what she's been here. No. Who's you here? left me here. There's a reason why I left. Oh, you left the restaurant? I, I, I took my time away from the restaurant for a couple of years. A couple of years? The situation between me and her just started really dissolving. And I kind of decided to take a little hiatus. And why would you take time out? I left because I didn't want to lose my sister forever because I was getting to that point that I would hate her. But um, Tina, give you an insight to what happened when Tina left. What, what, what happened to the restaurants? I mean, I was here as much as I needed to be. How many hours a week? Can you answer that? When she says she was here Wait, all the time, well, it was 25 hours a week. No, I'm here. You're not here. When was the last night you worked? It doesn't matter. I'm here two months. Nine, when was the last Nine evening? in the morning till four in, in the afternoon. You're not here till four o'clock. Okay, can't you learn the front of the house? I'm here every day. No, you're, you're not here every I'm here, day. I'm here this every day. This is the last six months you've been last here every eight, day. Ten you months. Know? And, and, and I was here every day. I lived here for 10 years. You cannot open the restaurant without me. Yeah. Truth, right? You probably have... could. I mean, I did in the beginning. I just haven't done it for several years. Chef, no. I've tried Chef, for 14 years. Chef, he stands years. back there in that doorway, mm -hmm. and he does this to me when I've been working and calling me at the same time. In the same building? And it's right there. Like, walk out and talk How's to me. How's that crazy? I'm just trying to get a hold of you. Now, I'm dirty, and I don't like coming out here with dirty clothes you know, on and cooking clothes. I don't like my cooks to be upstairs. out here. OK, so I'm going to run upstairs when I could just motion to you to come back here. That's just yeah. insanity. Like, and you hate me because of that? I, I don't you hate, hate you that, for that. that. That drives you crazy? There's a problem with something. Maybe someone's table. Maybe a, a question. Yeah, I just think I it's mean, annoying. Do you want me to, to scream it across the room? For the phone. Tina, can you come over here? No, don't scream. I mean, scream, seriously, like, you're upset at me because of that? I can't understand Look, why this, he won't walk in this dining room. We don't even argue because we don't talk long enough to argue. Because you're not here. Coming up. Strange. Chef Ramsay comes face to face with some of the worst food he's ever seen. Gross. And later. What in the hell? An unbelievable kitchen investigation. He's serving rotten food. Threatens the future of Levante's. I am stopping the owners serving this disgusting mess. Within minutes of arriving at Levante's, Chef Ramsay has witnessed how destructive this restaurant has been on this brother and sister relationship. 
Okay, sir. Follow me, sir. Now it's time to find out if the food is suffering as well. How are you? I'm Ralphie. How are you? Good. I'm Sam. Nice Sam, to meet nice you. Nice to see you. Likewise, good to see you. Good. A happy, smiley face for once. <laughs> I met the owners earlier, and they were down and in the dumps. Are they always like that? Yes, that's an always. OK, then. Let's order. OK. Got to go for the stuffed uh, banana peppers. Um, I've got to try that Italian stuffed filet. OK, how do you yeah. like it done? Medium rare, please. OK. Um, Carletta. Mm -hmm. It's our signature sauce. And who came up with that idea? Dino. Dino. Mm -hmm. It yeah, came awesome. to him in a dream. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Our claim to fame came in a dream from someone who knows nothing about food or how to prepare it. Flippin' egg. OK. <laughs> um, Got to go for the chicken carletta, because okay. that's the sauce that was dreamt of one night in his dream. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And it begins. Don't sweat the chef. Do what you guys normally do. What is that, olive oil? Yeah, but it doesn't taste yeah, like no, olive oil. Do you mind if I have a little taste? Go ahead. Oh, it's very watery. <laughs> it tastes like frying oil. <laughs> it does. Excuse me, so is yes. Tina nearby? Yeah, absolutely. Please, thank you. Wow, that's dreadful. Tina? Chef Ramsay's asking for you at 43. Oh, uh, no. Tina's been such a hands-off manager for so many years now that she's become so blasé. Yes, sir. Um, and what is that olive oil there? Is that canola oil? No, it's... Oh, it's five pumps? Oh, oh, oh. Is that the... Is that what you're serving there? It's that mix. Look at that. Jeez, it smells off. You smell that? What's in there? I don't know. When was the last time they were cleaned? I don't know. You're the front of the house. What a mess. Is the bathroom nearby? I can just yes, go wash my hands. To the Please. right. Shit, what happened there? What's that? Tiramisu. Oh, my God. Are they done every day? Probably a couple weeks ago. No. What, is that a fake tuna like No, you... it's... That's a real tuna suit? Oh, come on. No, that's... So that's just sat there from fresh. And you said two weeks? No, probably three weeks ago. That is longer than three weeks. This stinks. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Sam. Yes? How long have these desserts been sat here? A couple months. A couple of couple months? A couple of months, you yeah. just told me three weeks. No, I would say under a month. It was a couple months. <laughs> Do they stay out all night? Yeah. That is a fucking health hazard. Oh, my God. Shit, my boots. I, I can't. I can't do this. The chef's filet right here. OK. Here's our stuffed filet. This, this is the stuffed filet. Yes. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Wow. What a mess. I asked for mid rare, but it's raw. It's almost like you've got to stick your knife in it to, to kill it. I mean, the thing's still fucking moving. Um, Sam, uh, I'm trying to cut into that. I asked for mid rare, but it's like uh, raw. It's a little raw. Is that steak frozen? Probably. Could you just check with the chef? Yes. Please? Was that steak frozen? He wants to know. I don't. Was this frozen? Yeah. Yeah. That okay, well, he awesome. said it's raw. I don't know if I should laugh or cry. Which one? Both. All those crumbs oh, under there. Why is everything so dirty here? There's crap everywhere. I mean, just crumbs and hairs and disgusting. Uh, Tina. Oh, how often is the restaurant cleaned? I know you've got we... your dates wrong with the dehydrated desserts. Uh, we do our own shop. cleaning. You do your own cleaning. I, I appreciate that. That's not what I asked. How often is the restaurant cleaned? How often? Um, I can't answer. You can't answer. OK. Who knows the answer to how often the restaurant's cleaned if it's not you? I should know that. You should know. There we are. You know, Dino always comes out smelling like a rose. What's that noise? Like somebody's drilling. The register. Jesus, God. Is it always like that? Yeah. That noisy? Yeah, the phone's worse. Jeez. Ah. Banana peppers. 
Thank you. Absolutely. What's that? Jesus. Way too much cheese. It's like congealed snot. Sam, is this what they'd normally be like? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. It's strange. Very, very strange. What do you think? Right now, I'm confused. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen, you know, peppers, stuff like that. What's well, happened? Well, they're frozen. They're frozen. So when you put them in the microwave, and but then lift them up, all that stuff comes out. All that water comes out. Yeah. I feel like I'm eating donkey's cock. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Wow. Now we've gone from bad to bizarre. You know. What? You want to know what he said about these ones? What did he say? Feels like he's eating a donkey's pee pee. <laughs> Because since he knows you froze them, all the crap comes out because there's all that water in there. This is starting to get absurd. Sam, be respectful. Be respectful. Dino, this is Chef's Chicken Carletta. All right, I'm taking the Carletta now. Looking good, looking good. Chicken Thank Carletta you. Capellini. This is the, OK, that's, great. That's the dream sauce. This is the dream sauce? Yes. How do you think? What a mess. How much garlic did you put in there? Um, I have no idea. And the chicken, why is the chicken so hard? It's like no bullets. Idea. Wow, God help them. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Brought together in a dream. Unfortunately, he didn't realize at the time he was having a fucking nightmare. Oh my gosh. Dino. What? He said, how much garlic do you really put in this? And I said, who knows? And then he said, the, could you get the chicken any drier? The chicken any drier. I disagree with what he had to say about my chicken Carletta. I prayed for months for guidance, and my Carletta sauce is inspired by God. Uh, come over, guys. And this is... Mike Marker. Mike? Yes, sir. Nate. Nate. Uh, I don't know where to start. I'm, I'm lost for words. But what I will say is I think this is the worst Italian food I've ever eaten. Where shall I start? The stuffed banana peppers, it was full of water. Frozen, microwaved, and then some bizarre, weird canned sauce. The chicken carletta. Chicken was rubbery, shredded, chewed. You didn't like the sauce? It was gross. It was garlicky. It was just like something that shouldn't have been put together in the first place. Help me to understand the madness. I got inspired by mm -hmm. a higher power. A higher power? God. God. I mean that. God made the sauce. I mean, you can't all be there. Can you guys go back in the kitchen so I can yes, work sir. with the owners? Dina, Tina, both of you come over. When you can't even keep the place clean, that sends the alarm bells ringing. But I think deep down inside, you don't care and you've stopped caring. That's not true. Really? I do care. Dino, talk to me. I'm completely overwhelmed. Dino, who are you talking to? Any chance of looking them in the it? eyes? Do you have a pair of bollocks? I'm over here. I mean, I'm going to stand there, but just talk to me. Uh, what is the proper way to keep the front of the house of the restaurant clean? Oh, come on, Dino. Fucking hell. I'd... Aren't you embarrassed? Does your dad know that you're this bad? Take your father out of the equation, and you're fucked. We can't go on like this. We need help. I hope he's coming back. I don't think he is. <laughs> After a very frightening first few hours, Chef Ramsay tracks down the man responsible for funding Levante's. Tony, how are you? Good, Chef. Dino and Tina's father, Tony. I'm not for words. I walked in there, and the first thing that hit me was the animosity. And yeah. I'm nervous because I don't know if I can help because those two don't care. OK. But if it wasn't for your continued financial support, this business wouldn't survive. We were doing real good up to about four or five years ago. I, I kind of blame the economy more mm -hmm. than anything, you know? But it's not the economy that's affecting your restaurant now, that, that's, that's not the economy. Well, I, that's what they tell me anyway. Yeah. Maybe they're telling you that so you can keep funding it. Yeah, right, right. How much does the business owe you? Over 
over 200,000. 200,000. Just down to nothing almost, you know? Must be heartbreaking. Yeah, I fight with my wife too, and she start crying, you know, stuff like that. She's kind of upset about it. She said, just close it up. Sure. And she's telling me, close up. I don't want to hear this no more, you know? I'm really sorry. I'm here for you. I'm going to get changed, and I'll be in there tonight. Thank you very A much, deal. Chef. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. All right, guys. You ready? All right, let's get this crap on the road. As Chef Ramsay's first observation of a dinner service begins... Zucchini parm and a baked rigatoni. He has made sure that he is not the only one watching Dino and Tina's performance. Tony, how are you? Their father, Tony, is in the kitchen for the first time in several months. So, this is the line, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, how old's that stove? Oh, it's, it's, like 50 it's, years old, I'm assuming. The burners I have lit are the only burners that work. These don't work at all. The ovens don't work? No. Are you kidding me? No. If you stop me with that, what chance have you got? Dino, this slip is sold. There's that, D. Dino, what about my appetizers? Is that for me? Uh, no, it's not. Oh, my God. Dino, are you actually expediting? I'm expediting. All you're doing is just lifting food from that side of the kitchen and putting it to that side of the kitchen. But I thought you were expediting. I got to kind of ask Mike. He's got enough to do. Any of my food up? Uh, that's real. Hold on, hon. Hold on one second. Wow. That's yours, but I think these three are mine. Despite the chaos in the kitchen, the servers somehow managed to sort it out. The pizza here? And food is making its way out to the diners. Thank you. Unfortunately, the speed of service doesn't make up for the disappointing flavor. It's very chewy and gummy. It doesn't even look like meat. This is Alfredo sauce. Um, yes. And it's kind of chunky, it looks like. If I could, if I could order something different. else instead. I'll give you a menu. Thank How's that? OK. Dino, um, they think the Alfredo's lumpy. What's wrong with it, Dino? I don't think he drained all of the. What is that, Alfredo? It's Alfredo. Um, that's a disgrace. Your chicken tastes like it's frozen and unfrozen. Oh, no. Can you please make me another one? Guys, can you please look at my fettuccine sauce? Look at that. Are you it looks serious? like curdled milk. Are you, are you kidding me? No care, nothing, guys. I mean, I just, no wonder the food's coming back. What in the hell? Is this the chicken? Yeah. Stop. Stop. Uh, Dino, urgently. That's the chicken we've been serving all night, yeah? Why is it sat in all that? Look how slimy it is. Oh, my god. How old is that? Oh, my god. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Tony, two seconds. Tina, you're part of this. What in the fuck are we doing? How old is that? I don't know. Look at the color of the chicken. Green and stinking. Hold that. What's this? Hi. In what? We're serving that. Excuse me. Look at the way we work. What is this? What is this? Anybody? I have no idea. You've got no idea. And this? How old's this? Oh, my god. You disgusting pigs. Look at that. Yeah, it's fermented. Just, just, just smell that. Just smell that. Come on, please. You own it. Ladies, we've been serving that. See the mold around the side? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I thought that was basil. Frank, oh, my God. No, that's not basil. I wish it was fucking basil. How long does a sauce sit in the fridge to get moldy around the top? Quite a, quite a long time. I didn't expect to see all this. They're not doing the job they're supposed to be doing. And these guys, they're going to have a rough time now. Does the town of Beaver deserve this? Absolutely not. You should be ashamed. Ashamed. Now, walk out there and apologize to your guests and try and do something you've never done in 14 years. Fucking work together. I'm not going out there. Let's go. Excuse me. Um, we, we appreciate you guys coming out here and and um, trying out our, our, our restaurant tonight, but uh, we won't be having any more service. Uh, Chef Ramsay has shut us down for the evening. Fucking hell. Oh, guys, guys. Thank you. 
Dino, you're telling them that I'm shutting it down. I, I was just... I heard you. I was standing behind the door. Chef Ramsay did not shut this down. I stopped the owners from serving ship food. But I am not going to continue that. Because you don't realize right now, young man, how bad you've become. So I'm not shutting it down. I'm just stopping you looking more stupid. Did you honestly want to continue serving? So you want to continue? You, you want to you continue serving? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can I just have your attention for 30 seconds? Oh, gosh, he has it in his hand. Oh, my God. After Chef Ramsay discovered rotten chicken. Look how slimy it is. And moldy sauce. You disgusting pigs. Dino and Tina blame the shutdown of the restaurant on. Chef Ramsay has shut us down. Dino, you're telling them that I'm shutting it down. And now Chef Ramsay is determined to give a more accurate explanation. Ladies and gentlemen, can I just have your attention for 30 seconds? First of all, my apologies, but I'm not going to BS anybody. I am not shutting this restaurant down. I am stopping the owners serving this disgusting mess from chicken that's already slimed off, gone, to disgusting basil that was never fresh, to a tomato sauce that's actually caked in mold. I am not going to sit here and play party to that. I'm not going out there. I'm embarrassed. And whilst I am totally appreciative for you leaving your homes to come here tonight for dinner, I've got too much respect for you and too much respect for the industry. I am not going to be part of this any longer. My sincere apologies. OK, well, that was embarrassing. Well, what do we do? I have comp everything. I can't believe it. I'm very, very pissed off right now. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. No wonder they complain out there. Now I know exactly why this place wasn't making any money. Fuck. I, I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry. Absolutely bad. Uh, listen, I am so freaking sorry. Let me tell you. But. Those two need to know how bad they've become. I'm not going to continue serving food like that. I right? don't blame I'm, you. I'm, I'm I don't sorry. want people to eat it. I didn't come here for that. No. I wouldn't want to eat that shit either, you know? I see what's going on, and I'm sick of it. These kids got a lot of work to do. They've given up. I worked my ass off all my life. Two jobs. Hey, listen. I'm here for you, and I'm going to do everything I can to get this business turned around. But I need you, OK? You got me. I'm going to get involved. I'm not going to make it easy for nobody. OK. Thank you very much. While Chef Ramsay is disappointed with Dino and Tina, he remains in the town of Beaver to support Tony. I turn. Who has been blindsided by his children's lack of commitment. OK, this is going to be the most important meeting with your son and daughter since you've opened that business. They need to fight for the jobs. They need to understand you are the boss. Yeah? You ready? Good. Tough love. My kids better change. I will close the restaurant, and they're both going to be out. Truthfully, I don't think both of you know how easy you've had it. You're fighting against each other, as opposed to fighting for the future of the business. I gave you a chance, both of you. You guys never did what you're supposed to do, you know? Both of you have to stop arguing. Otherwise, you're not going to get nothing out of that business. I'll sell the building, I'll close it up, and you are not going to get nothing out of it. I got to be dead for you to get anything. Well, Dad, I'm sorry for letting you down, and I promise, and I will make you proud. Why don't you guys work hard? I will work and do whatever necessary to get 
a restaurant failing again. I, I, first, let me just apologize, Dad, for everything that we've been through for the last couple of years. I thought I knew what problems we had, and I had no idea that I didn't know. And uh, if you give me another opportunity, I promise you from the bottom of my heart that I am 100% committed. Well, you show me then. I'm giving you guys a chance. You guys better work together. You now. Roll up your sleeves more than ever before, because tomorrow we are relaunching your father's restaurant. And I want to see both of you ready to work. My team, alongside the research that I've been doing, we've been looking at what's not available in Beaver County. And based on that research, let me tell you, Levantes needs a dramatic change. Levantes is going to become an American bistro. I'll see you bright and early in the morning. Thank you, Chef. See you in the Thank morning. You. Thank you so See you in the morning. Thank Get ready for change. Thank you, Chef. I agree with Chef Ramsey. Things needed to change, and uh, I think all of us are extremely excited about the new Levante's Bistro. Faced with a restaurant that hasn't been touched in 15 years, Chef Ramsey and his team have their hands full as they transform Levante's from an Italian restaurant into a modern American bistro. Right, good morning. Yeah. How are we? Good. good. We're well, good. Are you ready to see a stunning new restaurant? Yes. Yes, yes Chef. OK, take off your blindfolds. Oh, oh my god. Oh, Holy wow. heck. Welcome to the new Levantes, your American bistro. Oh, my god. Oh, my gosh. It's awesome. Oh, wow. Gone are those dark and dreary walls. Take a look how new and modern, how appealing it is. This is awesome. We got rid of those horrendous, filthy booths, replaced them with new chairs, new tabletops, and a brand new central seating area. Beautiful, thank you so much. I haven't smiled in here for a long time, and I can't seem to stop. I'm so happy. Thank you so much, Chef. Now, one more thing. During my first meal, I couldn't even concentrate on my food. It sounded like a construction site with this thing hammering around. <laughs> Shaking away. So I'd like to introduce you to a stunning oh POS system. Oh, my god! Yay, that's so cool. From POS Lavu and Sefa Hardware. It is easy to use. It's wireless, and it can be operated anywhere in this building. Get out. This is the cutting edge of POS systems. It will truly help in terms of purchasing, your fixed costs, and your profits. That's cool. Oh, yes. That's cool. We're going to have a new beginner, and it's, this, is, this is just awesome. I told you, day one, that I'm here to support you. So I have found you two consultants, and they run two very successful restaurants. One of them is listed in the top 25 restaurants in Pittsburgh. Avenue B. I'd like to introduce you to Chef Chris Bonvilli and his wife, General Manager Jen Bonvilli. Chris, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. Good to see you. Thanks. Are you well? Yep, I am. Jen, how are you, my darling? Welcome. Good to see you. Chris is going to orchestrate with a kitchen, and Jen is going to help set up the dining room. We're happy to come in and just do what we do and make awesome food. So that's what we're Brilliant. all about. They are here on a consultant basis. So you need to listen and take that level of expertise and put it into this restaurant and pass that knowledge down to your team. Tony, Dino, Tina, I've got one more little surprise for you guys. Come with me. Thank you. Welcome to your new kitchen. Wow. Oh, yes. Wow. Look at this space. First of all, when I arrived, this kitchen was so dilapidated, I wouldn't even attempt to cook anything from there, let me tell you. So. I made some rather urgent calls to my friends at Cully Quip, and I asked them to put together a line of brand new equipment. Let's start off with an amazing energy efficient Falcon six burner range. Top of the line. Wow. When I say top of the range, I'm talking top of the range. It has a griddle top. Underneath that, it has a broiler. Underneath that, it has two ovens. Next to that, you've got a two-basket fryer from Pitco. Opposite that, an amazing brand new steam table from Eagle Group. And then this, for me, is the Rolls-Royce, a state-of-the-art Blodgett brush stainless steel convection oven. This Blodgett holds five baking trays. It's amazing, Chef. 
you now have all the tools to run this as a successful Russian, let me tell you. There's no excuse. excuse. Now that Levante's has been converted into a contemporary American bistro... Excellent, come through, please. Chef Ramsay continues his plan by introducing a brand new menu to match. We're cooking American classics. Looks good, looks beautiful. <laughs> Let's start off with the corn bisque. Sweet corn, done beautifully, seasoned, and served with little fritters. Awesome. Next to that, we've got mussels, done with pancetta, shallots, garlic, white wine, butter, classic. Entrees, starting off with a braised lamb shank, braised with vegetables, red wine, and a really nice lamb stock. And that will just fall off the bone, wow. yeah? It's tremendous. And then finally, pan-seared salmon with barley, salad, braised fennel, and pancetta with fresh herbs. Nobody has a menu like this locally. Now you can stand out from the competition. I think everything looks so good here. Good. Anybody hungry? Yeah. Yes. Good. Get some knife and forks. Dig in. Mm. Oh, my God. That is good. It is delicious. Amazing food. Amazing. I think we can compete now. Amazing. I want to eat it raw. I just love it. It's good. It's relaunch night at Levante's, but before they open for business, Tony has a little business of his own. Tonight, you gotta promise me that you guys are gonna work hard and make this happen. Entire giving it to you guys. Giving you, giving you. You, gonna, you guys are gonna give back to me. Believe me, I understand you don't have to tell me again, Dad. Committed. I promise. They should to me. Because I'll tell you what, if you guys don't you screw up, this is gonna be the end. You understand? I got it. We're on it. So much pressure this evening, but I meant what I said. I'm going to work hard and earn his trust back. I'm going to be watching you guys. With the pressure clearly on, Levante's opens its doors to the town of Beaver, Pennsylvania, for the first time as an American bistro. How different it looks. Good evening, folks. Welcome. Follow me, please. I have the New York strip. Wow. That's really high we tech. High Heck yeah. <laughs> we aren't playing around anymore. With Chris guiding Dino in the kitchen. Crab cake dip. Crab is in our hands right now, selling you two dip. And Jen working with Tina in the dining room. You could always cap the end of that four top. The relaunch is off to a smooth start. Wow. I can't believe this is safe place. <laughs> What's this? I'm confused. I don't have the slip. Checks on the printer, chef. Check on the printer. Got a stack of checks up there. Yeah, I know. I gotta get. I got. I got have a stack right here. I have to call right now. Calling to lamb, salmon. Table number, please. Sorry, table number fifty-one. Thank you. Dino is pretty rough at running the pass. Uh, he's pretty timid. Uh, I think he's not so sure of himself. He's having a hard time kind of grabbing the reins and, and getting after it. Come on, Dino, get on top of it. You've got to work three or four tables at once. Yeah. You're getting confused with the tickets. Look at me. Yeah. You're falling behind. Get on top of it, please. We're in the shit now. Let's go. One hour and count. Can I get a time on table one, please? 71 appetizer. How much longer for table three? They've been waiting a really long time. Did I already give that to you? Are you kidding me? Dino needs to get his stuff together, or else we're going to be an embarrassment once again to the entire community. Yeah, no, we're in the shit now. Let's go. I got this table 43. Been waiting here over an hour for food. 43. Hey, Dino, 43. What's going on? They've been here for an hour. Table 43. I feel like we we sold that. I really hope that Dino catches on quick. Because if you screw up the first time, I'll give you the second chance. You screw up the second chance, you're done with me. OK, look, stop, Dino. Fire, Caesar. Stop. 43 has not gone out. Oh, guys. It's an hour into the relaunch of Levante's, and Dino has lost control of the kitchen. Table 43. I feel like we sold that. Stop, Dino. Fire, Caesar. Stop. 43 has not gone out. Dino, yeah. jump the tickets, OK? Jump the tickets. What? We've got to handle that one first. Chris, can you stop what you're doing? For five minutes. Join it by the sides. Dino, wake up a little bit. You need to own it. Let's go. So I'm waiting on a burger medium to sell. Then my next order, I'm looking for salmon midwell, burger midwell. I realize tonight how much I do need Chris's help. I have uh, a mountain of learning ahead of me. It's just going to take a little bit of time for me. Table three, yes, burger. 
Hallelujah. Check soul. A burger. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll come back and check on you. Enjoy. Firing. Table four, muscles, butcher's board. Dino has a, a ton to learn at this point, but he has an awesome opportunity here, and he's the one that has to, to make it happen. Hey! So that's it. This is all sold. We'll be back. Yes, no. We'll be here. <laughs> well done. Levantes is back on the map. Big Thank time, you, yes? Chef. This gorgeous town loved the American Bistro. Did you hear the feedback from the food? I didn't have a single complaint tonight. Tina? Did a great job. Sure. Dino, tonight you had a first grasp of what it's really like running the fort. Yeah, I did. And tonight, Chris and Jen ran your restaurants. You've got to stick with them. You've got to listen to them. A big thank you to them both, because I thought you did an amazing job. Thank you very much. Well done. Good night, guys. Uh, good job. Tony, two minutes. Listen, that was a tough day. I had such a good time. You did? Yes. Everybody loved it. And it's good to see you smiling. <laughs> <laughs> you have a town now that's in love with your restaurant again. You can walk out those doors and hold your head up high. I can't thank you enough. You're a special father, let me tell you. There's not many about. Take care, Captain. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you. Love to the family. OK. I'm going to listen to you. Good night. Good night. Take care. When I came to Beaver, Pennsylvania, I had no idea that this would be one of the biggest kitchen nightmare transformations ever. But there are still two very big question marks remain. One's Dino, and the second one's Tina. Will they finally step up and satisfy not just their father, but their customers too? This is a very close-knit town, and I guess we'll just have to leave it to Beaver. Wow. In the weeks that followed. And table one, Janae. Good evening. Hi. How you doing? Chris and Jen continued their training of Dino and Tina. They need to see you hustling, too. They're going to hustle as much as you hustle. And with brother and sister working well together. How's everything up? It's going OK. I'm just coming to check on you. Tony can rest a bit easier, knowing that his children are in control and that the future of Levante's looks bright. All right, let's do it. Monrovia, California is located 30 minutes northeast of downtown Los Angeles. And right in the heart of Old Town is the local eatery, Sam's Mediterranean Kebab Room, owned and operated by Sam Najjar and his family. 1982, I started working as a busboy and dishwasher, and my dream was just to open a family restaurant with my wife and my kids. And then my dream became true. I buy the restaurant in 1997. Business was good when he first opened, but after a major slowdown in the last couple of years, the only employees that remain are Sam's wife and children. Let's go, Imad. Let's go, Imad. Me and my siblings, Cav, really kind of put our adult lives on hold just to see my dad's dreams come true. But, you know, I kind of want to start my life, but I'm not able to because, you know, I have to stick here with my dad. Nobody care about business. Nobody care. I feel like no one really wants to be here. The place looks a little depressing. The decor, it's a little old. Sitting down, really? We don't really give much effort anymore. My brother just slack on a lot of things. I and mean, just, here, 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 here. Bad, like how bad? Like bad, like I spit it out, I can't eat it. Half of the meat you served me as well. The beef, go, the go lamb, outside, and go the outside, chicken. Go outside. Most of the time, a restaurant is empty, and we tend to have nothing to do, so we start arguing with each other. I put all the numbers on my check. That's how it's You know how many times you guys have taken the food the without the salad? No. And how is the chicken cold if we take it right off the grill? It wasn't cold. She came and told me the chicken was cold. I didn't say the chicken was cold. Really it was cold. And we do argue in front of the customer sometimes. How is that wrong? There's only this limited space. Whatever I need, I need to make a hummus. And you got that wrong. Every day, my kids, they're fighting all the time together. I don't understand why. Dude, Jamal, go outside. This is not where you belong. Get out. Get out, man. Why, why always you guys are doing Everybody's standing around not doing anything. The stress this restaurant puts on us, you know, it's really kind of tearing down our family. <sighs> Business is very bad. We don't make money here. What the heck is that? $400? 
This is the only income. My family depend on it. If the restaurant closed, we're gonna be on the street. Before Chef Ramsay can make the short drive to the restaurant from his hotel, he is besieged by Sam's children. So you're Sam's kids? Yes. yes. Uh, right. First name? Imad. Imad. Yes. And Rhonda? Lena. Lena. We Sam. We Sam. Yes, sir. And Jamal. Jamal. Yes. Let's catch up inside. I was just on the way to see your dad. OK, no problem. When we tell Chef Ramsay what's wrong with the restaurant, he's going to be like, wow. So. In a nutshell, what is wrong with the restaurant? Um, honestly, like, I really thought it was that. He's just scared to let you. He's like, really, like, so stubborn. I used to be cool going he's to the so restaurant. You know, it, was, it was always a fun thing to go to the restaurant. It's like he's almost nervous. Like We're anxious. Jeez, one at a time, please. So I can hear you all clearly. What's wrong with the restaurant? My dad. Your dad. Basically, a lot of arguing. You don't do this for the restaurant. You don't do that. Or the restaurant's your fault. The restaurant's our fault. Headbutts, headbutts, headbutts like that. Everything. Hold on a minute. How many hours a week do you work? I'm working every day from 10 to 10. So you're full time? Yes. Seven days yeah. a week. Seven days a week. Yeah. We're all like that. We're all there inside and out seven days a week. Why would you all need to be there seven days a week? Because we're the only staff. Is this true? Yes, yes. it is. My dad, he doesn't want to put anyone else in the restaurant, like um, like his staff wise. He it's, says it's a family business. We all have to put in work. He always tells us that he did not have seven kids for us to go and do what we want. He always wanted us to like stay together, stay together in the Are restaurant. You? We all have dreams like and goals besides the restaurant. Right. We all have stuff to do, and we, when we want to do it, it's like we can't because we're at the restaurant. And now, as we get older, we're forced to be there because there's no that, other yeah. employees. Right now, who really wants to be there? At this point, no one. Wow. We need help. We need someone to just right. to, to show my dad like um, he needs to change. He's, he's just scared to let go. I appreciate all the information. I respect your honesty, and I'm going to go into Sam's now. I'm going to go see him. Um, he doesn't know about this, right? Did you tell no, him to come here? No. Let's keep it between us, OK? Is there anything else I need to know before I get in there? Um, just be prepared. The restaurant just needs a lot of work. I'm dying to get in there now. Yeah? See you back in the restaurant. All right, All right. OK? Right, there he is. Hello. How are you doing? What's the first Sam. name? Sam. Sam, OK, the owner? Yes. Excellent. And how long have you been open? From 97. And you run it with you and your... And my kids. Oh, your kids? I have seven kids. So it's a family-run restaurant? Yeah, they run the restaurant. That's a lot of salaries to pay out. Oh, I don't pay them any salary. You don't pay your children no. to work here? I can't afford to pay them. Where, where do they live? They live with me in the house. That's why I'm not charging anybody. You're not charging that. anyone. What, to live at your house? I don't charge that's anybody. A, that's a nice dad. <laughs> Let me shortlist you now from Dad of the Year. But they like to be here, right? Yeah. They enjoy it here. Sure. Yeah, right. Right. And in your mind, what's wrong with the restaurant? The restaurant is very slow. I've been behind almost $70,000. Wow. My kids, they're fighting all the time. The children are fighting? Yeah, always they're fighting. Oh, oh, nice, making the plates. You um, hear that? They fight? Yeah. In the restaurants? Yeah, all the time. If it wasn't you, then who was it? Not me. I did it for the other order. I told you I was working on the other order. Dumbass. Wow. And how would you rate your food out of 10? Uh, probably nine. Nine? Wow, I like that. Welcome. Oh, shit. What happened there? Oh, my God. No, don't worry, I'll change it. Don't worry, I can change that over. Um, what would you recommend? Well, we have the lamb shank. It's very good. Mm, I love lamb shank. Where's the lamb from? Lamb is uh, from New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. Thank you. You're good to welcome. meet you. welcome. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Thank you. Hello. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. How are you? All right, pretty good. Nice to see you. All right. Um, meat. Hold on. As in meeting place, it's M-E-E-T. How do you spell meat? M-E-A-T. Wow. I don't know if he wants to look through the whole menu, but there's more misspellings than that. There's quite a few. OK. I'm going to see as much as I can so I can get my head around there's it. There's combination place if you want to do okay. a little bit of both. I'll start off with a vegetarian combo. Thank you. Uh, your dad said the lamb shank is from New Zealand, okay. so he recommended okay. that. Uh, gyro? 
Okay. Uh, do you know what? I want to see the top sirloin, steak and shrimp. Medium rare, please, Danny. Okay. And I think we're fine then. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Danny. Look at this place. The decor is dreadful. Wow. God, it's depressing. Gabby, ready? Coming up. Okay. Veggie combo first. Give me four plates. What the heck are you doing here? You don't put me to the vegetable. Don't worry, man. Go outside. I got it. I'll take care of it. Wow. Everybody doesn't want to cook food back here. Get out. Nobody's yeah, talking to you. Get out. Well, I'm just telling you guys, you guys can't do your job, right? You know, you're over here thinking that you guys are putting the work for everything. Get out. Lots of fighting in the kitchen. Every customer can hear it. Get out. Nothing? Get out. Stop. You're not helping. Get out. Stop. Stop. Be quiet. Be quiet. The Just people are out. looking over God, here. Man. Wow. Is that done? Veggie combo's ready. This is the veggie combo. Thank you, Danny. Um, is that eggplant fresh? Is it, is it fresh? I'll check for you. Please. Right now. Thank you. You mind? Is the eggplant fresh or is it frozen? Canned. Oh. Uh, it's from the can. Canned eggplant? Mm -hmm. No. That's gnarly. That's just dreadful. You think of Mediterranean food, you don't think of canned eggplant. Yeah. And the falafel? Um, the falafel, my dad does that. He marinates that. They're bland. It probably has no salt in it. Jeez. So yeah, I'm mean, gonna get you your next place. Um, okay. Dreadful. I'll, I'll let them know. Okay, this is uh, Ramsey's plate. He wants to know if you season anything, because there's like no flavor to anything. What is it? What is he tasting? Like a towel? What's he eating? He just said it's bland. There's like no flavor. Give him the gyros. Give him the gyros. Here. Here you go. Take that down. All right. Jar. This is the gyro plate. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Will you ask him when it was made, please? When it was made? OK. Um, we want to know when it was made. Tell him we get it from a company. It comes frozen, and we heat it up, and we put it on the rotisserie. That's lime and beef. Hey, it's not how it's made. Is it, is it fresh? That's what she's asking. Is it fresh? It's not fresh. It's frozen. That's what I told her. It's frozen yeah. because we get it from a company. Yes, you tell her frozen. Not That's fresh. what I told her. I fresh that frozen. you make it. I told her oh, frozen. Yeah. You talking to the head chef and the wall. I told her it was you frozen. Can, you cannot lie. I didn't lie. You heard me tell her it was frozen. You, might, you need to stop screaming. The people are listening to you. My dad, you know, he just gets mad and he yells at me, which is stupid. If he doesn't know what he's talking about, it doesn't help anything. Strive. It's actually, um, they, it comes from my company, and then it's frozen, and then they heat it up on the rotisserie, so. I would love to be in a position to, to sit here and enjoy my meat, M-E-E-T, but yeah. it doesn't even taste. No taste? Well, it shouldn't, though. OK, enjoy. let me do the lamb shake. You guys didn't cook the gyro right, whoever it was. Shut the fuck up. You're stupid. What have you made right today, though? Just tell me. You're Simple stupid. question. So why don't you come back here and cook? I should come back here and cook. Fine. Round two. Sounds like a fight started. I need the lamb shake. It's coming. Lamb shake? Yes. Um, wow. Thank you. Mm. You guys can't do your job right. You shut the fuck up. Hey. What? I don't want to hear bad Tell language here in the up. kitchen. Tell your son to shut up. Yeah, you do. It looks anemic. The color's dreadful, and it just tastes like bland, boiled lamb. You guys are giving out garbage food. Are you serious? You're taking... Why don't you take over? I should. Then do out. it. If you don't want it, to get out. Do it. If you don't want it, to get out. You're stupid. Do me a favor. Send that back to fucking New Zealand. OK. What's going on there? Are you arguing because he's telling him that he doesn't know how to cook, so... Nobody's forcing you here. Idiot, dude. Yeah. Just go back Horrible. to the front. Horrible. Horrible. Who he cares about his opinion? He says that the the lamb, it just tastes like it was boiled in water. And it's, he said, send this back to New Zealand. He tried it. He said, there is no flavor on it. 
but I believe myself I make the best lamb shank here in California. I really don't know what to do. Bring it your head, let me hit you one on your head and finish it. Wait, what are you doing again? Oh, yeah, cooking food wrong. Nobody's talking to you. Stay back there. Yo, you always think wow. you're that way. You're worth everything. Yo, stay out of the way. I mean, me and coming it's back here. The customers are listening to you guys. Tell, tell him, this is not his job. Thank you. Goodbye. All you do is cut. You, you know, two tables just got up and left because all of you guys are yelling or screaming. Nobody wants to scream. Hey! Cool down! Where's the worst of the day? Why are you screaming? Nobody wants to scream. Stop screaming! While the family continue to battle loudly in the kitchen. You guys are giving out garbage food. Are you serious? Why don't you take over? Chef Ramsay has been forced to endure disappointing dish after dish. Do me a favor. Send that back to New Zealand. OK. And there's another one on its way. It's a steak, and then they're working on this scampi for you. It's coming out. Thank you. OK. Medium rare is not medium well. On the verge of well done. Oh, God, it's so annoying. This is scampi. Um, How is it Yeah, it's well yeah, done. there's no red, there's nothing. It's a medium rare if possible. Yeah. Solid and dry. And jeez, how much butter did you put in there? Um, I like some scampi with my butter. What's he trying to do, kill me? No, but that's how he adds flavor, I guess. That adds that's flavor. His, that's his season. Scampi, rubbery, overcooked. The scampi's overcooked too? Yeah, rubbery, really hard and just, just solid. Anywhere in the med, food doesn't look like this, you know that? Yeah. Bloody hell. Can you get me the uh, chef's out, please? Chef Ramsay wants to see everybody outside. Before I start talking about the dishes, what was the fighting going on there? He just likes to come back and argue about pretty much nothing. Actually, when we get a complaint, I like to tell him what's going on, and they can't take criticism. No, that's not it. Let you like to make it seem like talk. you're better at so everything why are you still than anybody if else. Talking? If I come back there and let them know, hey, this is dry, or hey, the hummus is messed no, up. No, we, we can accept that, but the fact that you come back there, oh, you guys can't cook, you guys are shit, it's you guys not, are that. Okay. I don't say it the first time. No. I say it after the 13th table. Right. You like to, the say, the 13th you table, like to say that we don't do after nothing After the 13th right. you do table that better. complains. OK, OK. That's what I have every day. Can I start talking about my lunch? The combo plate, eggplant out of a can, hummus, bland, falafel, bland. Sam, you recommended lamb shank, but the bones were disintegrating. When the bones start disintegrating, that's three hours overcooked. I don't know what to tell you. Have you given up? Not yet. Top sirloin, it was miles away from medium rare. Mm. What are you oohing about? Shut up. Okay. No, no, I it's heard not, something earlier. nothing to do with you. Okay. What's wrong? He's making it seem like it's all my fault. He said, mm, mm, like I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, they so know they've saying. been messing up all day before you even walked in. So when you know he was here, can't you just like step up? You should have stepped up. I'm telling you guys what's okay, going on. He wasn't in up. that position today. Stop putting the blame on him. You guys were cooking. He's the, cooking. Brother, He's the one criticizing us. Okay. Even if he was criticizing, you guys, you guys cooked food. the food. That's what happened, right? That's what happened. You can try it. Tell me what you think. I, I've never seen anything like this. Have you given up? Kind of. Kind of. Do you care? Not really. It shows you don't care. Shrimp, they came swimming in a bowl of butter, overcooked. Didn't you guys see it? It's because we were busy arguing. I could hear it. So could your diners. Yeah, they just get up and leave because of that. Wow. I'm going to get some fresh air. <sighs> this is my dad's restaurant. I do as much as I can to help him. But being forced to be here every day, you know, it's kind of like making me feel like I don't want to care. So you're not too happy, huh? Not really. And you? What's your problem? I just graduated high school. So? Who wanna run this business? You blame your brother. Yeah, raw food and, and overcooked meat. Is it my fault? No, you do everything perfect. Since you're Mr. Yeah. Perfect, I can make better food. Why don't you serve dinner tonight? Yeah, I should actually. Yeah, and yeah. I'll work outside. <laughs> That's what I thought. Don't step up to the plate. 
Your job is to put food on the grill. Why don't you make it put your job? Put food on the grill Why and sit there and watch it cook. You don't know where to take it off the grill correctly? Make it your job. You don't know where to take it off better? Show me you can do better. Can you take it? Show me you can do better. Can right? Show me you can do better. I'm in the front cleaning tables and cleaning everything up. The kitchen is not my problem. Go ahead. That's your role. That's what I thought. Bad. You cannot step up to Some the plate. cook you are, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Some son you are wanting to help. Shut the hell up. Nobody happy here. I don't know what the heck to do. I really don't know. OK, OK. Cook my food right, and you'll be fine. No, we won't be fine. After getting criticized by Chef Ramsay at lunch, Go do something about it. Do what? The family gets ready for dinner service. Oh, so you want to give it I'm to them cold. Yeah, and they have not taken a break from the fighting. My job is to get from there to the table. Max, hey, go find something to do with the table. Hey! Stop, that's enough. Chef Ramsey. Hi. Hello. You have another sister? My mom. My mom. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to and meet you. And first name is? I'm Ahlam. Let's catch up, shall we? Let's have a little seat and sit down. Man, I have headache. I have headache, really. First of all, um, I must tell you, it looks like the, uh, the kids are trapped in here. Is this what you wanted? No, not really. No? I feel sorry for the kids because they miss out so much for their life. They need yeah. to grow, go somewhere. But at the same time, he needs them. How do you manage? Bad. Very bad. I haven't been sleeping lately. But it's not healthy for your daughters and your sons to be in this environment seven days a week. They can't be chained to the restaurant. They need some space, right? Yeah, they do. I think if we don't stop it, you're going to lose them. OK. Tonight, I'm going to watch service. I'm going to see how this place operates. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Hi, welcome to Kebab Room. I need two regular salads. OK, we need a Greek salad, a waffle plate, and a chicken and lula. What are you just standing there for, man? Do something. OK, so who does what on the grill? We pretty much all split it up even. So there's not one person on the grill? No, no. Sam? No. No, we kind of just switch it off. You just switch it on off? Yeah. yeah. Our heart. Just leave it, just leave it. Take yeah. it out, yeah. Send it out. We really don't care how the food is cooked. I'm doing all this work from day to night, every day, and I don't even get paid. Table 14. This is beef and chicken. For 14. Falafel plate. Steak medium. For medium. I asked for medium. This is like bloody. He wants this medium. You guys cooked it rare. Who cooked it? I did. It's definitely right. OK, I'll make a new one. Iman! What? It's a steak. It's well done. She wanted medium rare. Hey, look done. What do you want me to do? Shut up. Don't tell me look done. It's burned. How many steaks we throw today, man? Every day, I have to throw like 15, 20 like this. Every day. Sam. No. Yeah? They're, they're, I didn't see that. They're wrong I didn't see that. Look at this one here. Where's your walk-in? It's right here, right inside. What's in here? Like a bathtub of parsley. Buckets of parsley. Chopped. That's a fresh. That's what we gathered today. Yeah, I know, but you're not using it today. No. When you chop fresh parsley, all the flavor's gone. Yeah. You've got to use it immediately. What are they? They're celery leaves? Whoa. It's a brand new case. That says a statement that nobody cares in here. What is this? Look at that. This what? is two days ago. What do you mean two days ago? Two days ago. This is Tuesday. Sam, today's Saturday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Five days. Five days. Lamb shanks. Lamb shanks. It's just like a dumping ground. Look at this. Salad. It's rotten. And this one? It's tahini. Tahini. You don't think they'd empty that now? Put it in a smaller container? What a mess. Yeah. It is a mess. Oh, man. He gave me a full plate. He didn't eat it. 
What's wrong with it? It was still raw. Give him another one. He doesn't want another one. Man, I'm getting heart attack here. Rhonda, run this out. What are they? Chicken strips, the one we buy, the frozen one. You can't say that. We got two seconds, please. Sam. Come here, all of you. Look at that. Just touch that. I wouldn't serve that to my dog. What did they tell you? I didn't tell you don't serve it. And I didn't know why we're doing it. Sam, you're in charge, and you're serving raw chicken. I'm amazed that you're still open. Why are you serving? The outside is cooked. So I'm figuring the inside is cooked. Yes, you're chained to the business. Yes, you don't want to be here. But you cannot serve that shit and expect to get away with it. Those kids drive me crazy, man. All what you want, finish the order and sit down. That's not where I can't even have time to sit down. What are you talking about? Oh, it's my kid's fault they do this. It's my kid's fault because of that. He don't listen. He doesn't care. When really it's his decision to keep us all here, he brought that upon himself. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Here. That's it. This is the last place. This is cruel all night long. Thank you, guys. Yeah, stay seated and tell him thank you. That was stupid. Oh, stay seated. Look who's talking. You're standing right, right there. there what, on your phone. What else are you stupid. doing? Get up. That's what I thought. Are you paying me? Are you my boss? You're stupid. Don't tell me what to do. You're stupid. This is fucking annoying, I swear. Put that damn brick out of his head. Oh, here comes the stars of the night. It's my dad's restaurant. I don't have to do nothing. I can do whatever I want whenever I want. Oh, stop. Stop. Enough. You're stupid. You have a big mouth. Yeah, keep talking. Shut you your mouth. Saying? Shut up. Fucking idiot. Dumbass. Yeah. So oh, fucking good. waitress. Garbage. Look who's talking. Yeah. I'm, I'm garbage. You're Please, more than you garbage. Doing as much as I can I take another dumpster yourself. right now. It looks cleaner than your face. Good Shut enough, up. Huh? Do nothing around here now. All of a sudden, you act like you own the place. You can't have the damn customer right. You can't take it, or you can't bring back drinks right, let alone help the yeah, customers. Yeah. Okay, we're well, going Get inside. You're useless. Then you can You're useless. I tell them, Get out shut of my up. face. We can even run the food out and check the tables better than you, you guys can. At right. the same time. Cook your food right, and then you can serve it. No. Shut up. Shut up. Get out of my face. While Chef Ramsay continues to inspect the state of the restaurant, the family went out for fresh air. And what they got was a major brawl between Rhonda. You do nothing around here now. All of a sudden, you act like you own the place. And oldest son, Jamal. You're not even Thank here. You. She's not here either. No, never. Never. Shut up. You guys are full of shit. Fucking you guys stupid. are full of shit. Baba, who's here every day? Not you. Who's here every day? What, when you're open, busy? Shut up. Hey, guys, guys, all of you. Stupid. Relax. Honestly, I mean, this does not feel like a family. And the way we've just behaved in the last five minutes is the way we've just conducted service over the last two hours. Disorganized, chaotic, and so fragmented. And the people suffering are the customers. Yeah? Jeez. Oh, boy. Those kids are dumbass. It's not good. What am I supposed to do? Tell me. Is that fair for me to stand there and get yelled at by every single one of them? For what I did was wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. That's not fair. Just come down. Since his arrival, you guys take a seat. Chef Ramsay has witnessed constant bickering and fighting. Okay. He realizes that much of it can be attributed to the feeling of being trapped in their father's restaurant. You've never done this. But what I want you to do now is to be honest with your father and explain that your lives and your careers are going elsewhere. I want you to be open. Tell them what you're feeling your frustrations, why you don't want to be here. Tell my dad. Yes. It's like going to hurt him. This is going to be tough, but you each have to stand up to him. 
You do not have to be here seven days a week. It's stopping now. You've got to stay focused on what you want to do now. Here he is. OK? I'm freaking out right now because I know my dad's going to get hurt. I know he thinks that we love being here, but we really don't. Yeah. So there's something they would like to talk to you about. OK, I'm ready. Lena, why don't you go first? Let's go, darling. Seba. Hey. Come on. Um, so, even though we're here to help, we appreciate everything the restaurant has done for us. I need to focus on going in a different direction, becoming independent. We all just need a little bit of schedule, a thing where we're not here seven days a week, every single but one of you, us. you know, you're still too young right now. You're still a child for me. You're only 19 years old. There is a rule here. This is a family rule. It's not like what you want to do. You have to hear first from your dad and your mom, and then you can do it on your own. I don't think this is going to go as well as Chef Family thinks it's going to go. My dad is not an open-minded person, like, at all. I am here to help you at the moment, and I've been here full time, every single day, nonstop. But as the time comes, I kind of want to go my own way and do my own thing. How oh, I'm going to let you go on your own, and you're still shy. Sam, what you have got to stop doing is making them feel guilty. And because the restaurant's not making money, they're having to wear that jacket of burden. And it's not your daughter's fault that this is not working. I want them to understand that every day someone has to be here. But it's driving them apart. You have to understand when the time comes, we all have to do our own thing. What can I say? Let's see. Let's get me. Yes, him. Um, I'm here to help you. But if I'm going to college, it can't be. I promise you, they're all here for you. And as well as this is tough, it's really important for them. <laughs> and I'm here for you as well. And yes, you've got every pressure, every bill, every demand on your shoulders, but we can't continue like this, buddy. OK? OK. Come on. <sighs> Seeing my father cry, hell is really hard for all of us. But how to do it, how to tell them the truth straight up. I know I've been here every day for the past um, four, five years. I don't always make it seem like I hate this place, but I do. <laughs> but we're going to change this. We're going to turn this place around. I'm not going anywhere for the short term. I'm going to be by your side. Let's get me boy. We argue, we fight, we kill each other here. All because, all because. <sighs> Nobody cares enough to try, to try to do something about it. for you, but they have other aspirations and other dreams. And there comes a time when we all have to let go. And today is the beginning of that. Of course, makes sense. I can't stop them. I can't stop them.
Get some fresh air. I'll see you in five minutes, okay? I love you guys. I love you too, Dad. <laughs> I love every one of you. I want everybody to know that I'm here for everybody, anytime. We're all here for you too. We're all gonna make an effort to make this. Better. It's gonna help it pick up. I hope so. In order to make it work. <laughs> Stay up. Love you guys. I love you too. Dad. I love every one of you. I love you too, Dad. I love you. I love you too. With Sam and his children coming to an understanding. Right, let's go. Chef Ramsay can now begin to work on one of the other major problems of Sam's kebab room. Fresh. Every time. The food. I'm going to make delicious shrimp and chicken kebabs done with freshness. When we're cooking kebabs, why don't we cook them on the skewer? It's so much more juicier, yeah? More flavor. Because when you're squeezing hell out of the food and you're pushing down, what do you think that's doing to the food? Getting all the juice out of it. Taking yes. all the juice out of there, exactly that. Cooking on the skewer gives us so much more control, much easier. And then, watching you all last night, have you any idea how many times you cross over each other? Right. We're going to have one person manning the grill, not four of you. Who's the best grill chef in here? Me. OK. You're going to be at the helm as it cooks. And I want you going over there and glazing that. Chef Ramsay opened my eyes to cook the right way. I was very happy to watch him because I want to learn more what I know. Your grill should be like a chessboard where you're manipulating all the time, up and down. They come off, glaze them again. Cooking next to Chef Ramsay in one afternoon, I've learned more than I've ever had. How does it look? Amazing. It look beautiful. Beautiful. Excellent. Very good. Now, we're not at an art gallery. Jump in and start tasting. Come on, Sam, dive in. <laughs> this looks like Malaysian food. Chicken tastes really good. Yeah. That shrimp was bomb. <laughs> Everybody was happy, and the food is delicious. Really, it tastes good. Oh, by the way, I haven't seen this for a long time, so I'm going to grab it now while I can. Quick smile, please. <laughs> Everybody look at me. <laughs> smile. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Believe it or not, I'm ready right now to move forward. No more fighting, no more arguing. <laughs> While Chef Ramsay's plan to fix the food is now in motion, his team gets started on a massive overhaul of the restaurant. First of all, good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> okay. good morning. Good morning, Chef. How does it smell in here? Amazing. Amazing. And beautiful. Amazing. Wait until you see it. Come on, let us see. O-M-G. <laughs> OK. Take off those blindfolds. Wow. Wow. Welcome to the new Sam's. Look at this gorgeous room. Wow. Oh my God. This is the place. This is the place. Unbelievable. Let me tell you something really important. This has been one of the biggest and most expensive transformations we've ever made. Ever. Wow. This. It looks like it. Wow. We got rid of that dark dingy hole and transformed it into a casual, modern kebab house. Beautiful. Something to be proud of. Oh, my god. That's a color restaurant. Beautiful. Wow. The restaurant feels more open. Wow. A brand new carpet throughout. The salmon colored dirty walls have gone, and we've got this charcoal color set with these amazing art blocks. It brightens up the restaurant dramatically and gives it a nice modern touch. It's beautiful. Say. When I first stepped in this door, sitting down in the chair, I noticed a huge hole. Then when I looked around, there was holes in every chair. They've gone. Look at those babies. Brand new chairs. I see you got the chills, yeah. man. I know, me too. I see you got the chills. Sam, talk to me. I love it, man. You love I it? love it. It looks so gorgeous. They make me feel like I am in the heaven. Lisa, how do you feel? Um, I'm in speechless. You're this speechless? Amazing. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Ramsey, 
I don't know how I'm gonna thank you. I appreciate that from the heart. Thank you, Sam. I know you mean that. I never thought my dad would ever be open to change. I'd see a new man. Let me give you a hug before you go. Let's go. Well, I'm not going anywhere. We've got a lot of work to do tonight. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, my dad. He doesn't hug anyone. He doesn't even hug my mom. I like to see that smile on your face. I love huh? you, man. I love I'm you. you. I want to put the blindfold back on. I don't believe it's real. I don't believe it's real. Now that the much needed makeover to Sam's kebab room has taken place. Let's go, Sam. Oh, my God. Chef Ramsay is ready to unveil a contemporary Mediterranean menu. Visually, what'd you say? It's beautiful. It looks delicious. That is sure to have the town of Monrovia buzzing. Dig in. Come on. Yeah, man. This is good. Amazing. Classically done. Absolutely delicious. I love the falafel. This is the kind of food we should have been serving here. I don't think I've ever been this excited or happy to come to work. This is how you make lentil soup. We do that in the house all the time. The food is amazing. I never thought in my life I'm going to have a restaurant like this today. Believe it or not, better than in Lebanon. Oh, yeah. Better than the whole Middle East. With the restaurant and family ready to face a new chapter. Make sure it doesn't get too thick. Chef Ramsay is happy to spend the day training and working in the kitchen. Okay. What I want you to do is work with two hands, not with one. Twice as quick. I'll okay. you try over there. Plate, plate. Nice. See what happens when you're organized? OK. Again, you are now in control. Table 12, fire. Keep it going, yes? Here's another chicken. The customers are raving about the transformations made to the decor and food. Oh, my god, it's not brown anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. But the biggest transformation might just be the family themselves. Let's go, Abdul. We got this. Let's go. Perfect. 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 One, two, three, four. Table ten. They're working together, united, as a team in support of their father, Sam. Here's the plate. You got two behind you. Slide it up behind you. Put two pictures on there. Everybody's just more calm. It's just more of a family now. This is your table Thank 15. You. Thank you. Can I have a ketchup, please? Good. Teamwork. I'm very happy working in a restaurant like this. You know, before, I didn't want to be here. But now I'm going to keep going strong until we can actually hire somebody to take my place for the long run. And not surprisingly, there's someone else besides the family who has a smile on his face. I am so proud of you all. Well done. You've got everything you need to make this restaurant a success. And when you come together, it's harmony. Big group hug. Let's put mom and dad in the middle. I never see my family happy like now. Before Chef Ramsey come in here, they're fighting all the time together. But everything has changed right now, and I hope it stay like that for the future. It's my dad. Open it. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's the moment I knew we had turned things around. Every time you think of falling out, go to that picture and remind yourselves the importance of sticking together. Yes. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, bud. Look Thank after you yourself, good. yes? Yeah. Okay? I wish I'd see you again. Uh, you'll definitely see me again. Good night, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank Take you. care. Good night. Take care, guys. Come back, <laughs> <please>. <laughs> when I first arrived, there was so much tension in the air, we were bound to have an explosion. As a matter of fact, we had a few. But once the air cleared, the family finally came together, and we had a good, and I mean good, relaunch. I only hope now that Sam stays in complete control of his restaurant, but not his children. Wow. You say kebab, and I say kebab. After several successful months... Table five, fired. Paul Lina. You like it? Yeah? Thank you. Wow. Delicious. Sam is now able to give his children some time off. And for the first time in years, Sam's kebab room is hiring.